All right, so lipids are uh, sometimes called fats, but technically um, they're not just fats, there are other lipids. The one characteristic that all lipids have in common is that all lipids are insoluble in water. They're hydrophobic. Their structures beyond that can differ. And we're going to actually talk about three groups of lipids. The first one is fats, or it's actually going to be fats and oils. The second one is phospholipids, which we will actually talk about a lot more in the upcoming chapters because phospholipids are what the cell membrane is made of. So when we get into cells, we'll talk more about phospholipids. And the third class of lipids are steroids, which some people think of steroids and automatically think of like anabolic steroids that are illegal and people injecting steroids, but steroids, there's actually lots of natural steroids. A lot of the hormones in your bodies are steroids and we'll, we'll talk about that. So the first one we're going to talk about are fats and oils. <clears throat> and the structure of fats and oils are the same. They're made of three what are called fatty acids attached to a little three carbon molecule called a glycerol. And I'll show you a picture of one in a moment. The difference between a fat and an oil is that typically when we think of fats, and this will come up in a second anyway, we think of things that are solids at room temperature. And when we think of oils, we usually think of things that are liquid at room temperature. Typically, most uh, fats are animal products. If you think of bacon grease or lard, if you think of butter, if you think of um, the marbling in a steak, those are, all, those are all solids. Those are all fats. When you think of oils, you usually think of plant products. Olive oil, canola oil, corn oil. Um, there are, I know coconut uh, oil is one of the few that actually is solid at room temperature, uh, but most plant products are oils, and most of the animal products are fats. Sometimes they're called triglycerides because of the fact that they are three fatty acids, that's the tri, connected to this molecule called glycerol, that's where the glyceride part comes from. And this is a diagram of one here at the bottom. So if you'll notice, this, this is the glycerol, and these long chains are the fatty acids, one, two, three. So three fatty acids and a glycerol. They'll always look, triglycerides will always look like that. Three long chains coming off of one little three carbon molecule. Now the other thing about fats that makes them very useful to us is that they hold a lot of calories. Usually, we, again, we think of that as a bad thing. Oh, we don't want to eat stuff that's high in fat. It has a lot of calories in it. That's true. But the fact that we store our energy long term as fat is actually a benefit because if you can store twice the amount of calories in the same amount of space that um, you would be able to use, uh, for example, carbohydrates. If you think of, um, if we stored, for example, our fat as starch instead, in order to store the same amount of calories, we would be twice the size. We would look more like a big baked potato because it would take a lot more space to store the same amount of energy. So it's a very nice, compact way of storing a lot of energy in a small amount of state of space. So it's beneficial for an animal to store its excess energy as fat because we could still be very mobile. We can move around. It doesn't get in the way. Whereas if we stored it as starch, we would be very bulky. Potatoes would not make very good mobile organisms. Um, the other thing is we also use fat. I mean, I may have mentioned this yesterday as well. Um, it's insulation. It keeps us warm. In our, uh, in our, some of our organs, like for example, your kidneys are held in place with fat. So if you lose too much weight too quickly, you, your kidneys can actually fall out of place um, because your organs, a lot of your organs are supported by, cushioned by, held in place by fats. So there are, there are good reasons for having fats in your body, not just bad. Now, if you notice this picture, you'll see how this third fatty acid is bent at the bottom. It's not because they ran out of space, like, you know, when you do on your paper and you start writing sideways. That's not what's happening here. Um, this double bond that they added causes it to bend, and we're going to talk about that on the next slide. So this double bond, is there's a reason for that, and it causes a, a bend or a kink in the fatty acid chain. Uh, so this is a picture of how they connect. So this is a fatty acid. 
This is the chain, the original fatty acid before it connects. You'll notice at the end of a fatty acid, the reason why it's called a fatty acid is because at the end of it, it has a carboxylic acid group. So that's why the chains are called fatty acids. When they connect, it's a condensation reaction. A drop of water is released. This is the glycerol. And you'll notice that what you end up with is an ester, which again was another functional group that we talked about, and that's the connection. So there's our three chains. In this case, they're all straight. Um, connected to the glycerol molecule. Again, it looks very different from a carbohydrate. Remember, the carbohydrates were a little... And also, the carbohydrates had that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Fats don't have that ratio. Fats have lots and lots and lots of carbon and hydrogen. They might be like C42H, you know, 86 or, or whatever, and then like three oxygens. Like it's lots and lots of carbon hydrogen. And since these bonds to carbon hydrogen are nonpolar, that's why fats don't dissolve in water because, because of these carbon hydrogen bonds. Very few oxygens. So they do have carbon hydrogen and oxygen like a carbohydrate, but very few oxygens really just here for the connections are the only places where you see the oxygens. Okay, so the difference between saturated fat and unsaturated fat has to do with the uh, those bonds between the carbons. So in an unsaturated fat, what happens is, if you remember what a fatty acid looks like, it was a long chain of carbons. If there are any double bonds, if they're all single bonds, it's a saturated fat. It's literally saturated with hydrogen. Every carbon has the maximum amount of hydrogen it can hold. So this would be an unsaturated fat because it has a double bond. Actually, um, I take that back. On the end of it, if it was a fatty acid, you would have the carboxylic acid group on the end. So we'll add that here. All right, so don't count this double bond. We're talking, because that's just the functional group on the end. But if there's any double bonds in the chain, that makes it an unsaturated fatty acid. The thing is that, in reality, it's not a straight line. Wherever there's a double bond, it's going to kink or bend. And that's what makes it a liquid at room temperature. And you might say, why would a bend make it liquid at room temperature? Think of it this way. If I have a, a stack of papers and all my papers are perfectly straight, it's really easy for my papers to stack on top of each other and form a nice compact solid. Saturated fats are like that. They're all, they're very straight and they stack really easily, which means they can link together and they can form a solid very, very easily. So at room temperature, they're solids. Every time there's a double bond, Imagine that that's one of my papers in my stack that's wrinkled. Now they're not going to compact as easily. So they're going to tend to be liquids at room temperature. They're not going to compact into solids. So they have, they, you have to cool them a lot more. You can make them solids, but you would tend to have to cool them down a lot more to sort of force them to compact together. Because of those kinks and bends, it's like crumpled papers, and it keeps them liquids. And that's better for you. It's going to be more healthy. Um, than solid ones that can then solidify and clog up your blood vessels and things like that. So those are unsaturated, and then saturated have all single bonds between the carbons. Again, what they're saturated with, if you think of a sponge being saturated because it's full of water, the saturated is that they're saturated with hydrogens, that every carbon is bound to the maximum number of, of hydrogens that it can bond to. So when we use the word fat, we're usually referring to saturated fats. When we use the word oil, we're usually referring to unsaturated fats, which tend to be liquids at room temperature for the most part. The more double bonds they have, um, usually the, the more you could cool them and they would still be a liquid. The increase in double bonds makes them liquids even at lower temperatures. All right, so I have a diagram of each of these. So this is a saturated fatty acid. See how it's all double bonds? Again, this is just the carboxylic acid group that makes it a fatty acid. So don't count this as a double bond. This is unsaturated, and you can see the double bond. They may or may not actually draw a bend where the double bond is. In reality, it does make them bend, but that takes a lot of space on a paper. So sometimes they'll draw the double bond, but they'll still draw it in a straight line to save space. So don't necessarily look for it to bend just to be a double bond. Um, this is another picture. So here's the thing. So if you think of things like butter, butter's good. You can spread it. It's a solid. But they thought, oh, but butter's bad for us because it's a saturated fat. So they tried to come up with a way 
to take unsaturated fat and make it a solid at room temperature. Because if we can take unsaturated fat that's good for you, turn it into a solid at room temperature, we could use it like butter and it would be a butter substitute and that would be better for us. So they, they would take vegetable oil and they would put it through this process called hydrogenation. They would basically try to pump hydrogens in and try to take away some of the double bonds to, to make it solid. Because like I said, the more double bonds, the more liquidy it's going to be. Unfortunately, what they didn't realize, as usual, man-made, is that they created something called a trans fat. So when, when you normally have double bonds, notice how these kinks kind of bend all over the place. This would make it uh, liquid at room temperature. Trans fats actually kind of straightened out, but it turns out that in our bodies, they're even worse for us than saturated fats. We'd be better off just having saturated fat than trans fat. So now you see a lot of advertisements on things, you know, no trans fat. Trans fat's a man-made thing anyway. It's, it's our screw-up that we tried pumping hydrogens in to create something better for us, and we ended up, as usual, making something worse for us. And you don't need to know anything about trans fats for a test, but since it's something that you probably hear a lot these days, you know, trans fat free, that's what trans fats are. They're a man-made thing where we tried to pump hydrogens in and solidify unsaturated fats so that we would get the benefit of them being unsaturated, um, but make them a solid at room temperature. All right, phospholipids look like this. So you still have the two fatty acids. Here's one fatty acid. Here's the second fatty acid. But the third fatty acid is replaced instead by a phosphate group. And that's where the phospho comes from. We're not really going to talk about them anymore in this chapter. But when we talk about the cell, you'll see that we... Um, we're going to spend a bit of time talking about cell membranes. And you may remember the cell membrane diagram, how it always they always drew phospholipids as a ball with these two squiggly sticks. Now, it might make a little more sense, the ball is supposed to represent the phosphate group, and the squiggly sticks are the two fatty acids. Why do you think they put them all squiggly and bent? Because they're unsaturated. And every place there's a double bond, you end up with a bin. So in the cell membrane, because the cell, the fatty acids in the cell membrane are unsaturated fatty acids, it, they draw, draw it with these bins or kinks in the, in the phospholipid bilayer. So that's when they're drawing phospholipids. That's actually on a molecular level what they're drawing. So it's a phosphate group, still two fatty acids, still the glycerol, but the third fatty acid is replaced with a phosphate. Technically not just a phosphate. There's a little more to it, but you see the phosphate group there. And again, we don't draw this out when we do the cell chapter. We just represent it with the little ball and stick. All right, and then the, uh, this is another diagram of that. And then the last um, group of lipids are steroids. And steroids all have the same base structure. It's four rings, but they're fused together. So this is gonna look different if you notice it looks different than a carbohydrate, like a starch or something. Those had rings, but the rings had gaps between them and they were connected in a chain. Every steroid has this same base. Cholesterol is actually the base for all steroids, which means eating things with cholesterol, what your body does with the cholesterol is it uses it to actually make steroids in your body, like testosterone or aldosterone or cortisol or um, uh, you know, progesterone. Basically, some of the hormones in your body that are natural that you need are steroids, and you make them from cholesterol. However, you might also see lots of commercial on TV where people say that they've controlled the cholesterol in their diet, they're eating right, they're exercising, and their cholesterol is still high. That's because you don't just get cholesterol from what you eat. You actually manufacture it yourself. Your cells make, can make cholesterol. So sometimes genetically, some people are just more predisposed to having high cholesterol than others, even if they eat right. I could eat awful, you know, eat, you know, French fries and, and lots of butter on everything and have lower cholesterol than somebody that eats better than me just because genetically I make more cholesterol. Um, so those medications tend to lower how much you make or they um, have uh, increased the, the receptors to pick up and process cholesterol so it gets it out of your bloodstream. That's usually what those, those different sorts of drugs do. Um, the other thing is, if you notice, even like t testosterone and progesterone, progesterone's a female hormone, testosterone's a male hormone, but if you look at them, they look almost the same. 
A lot of times steroids can get converted to other steroids. So people that take antibiotics.